these dogs rescue pups from puppy mills or from abusive owners. Dogs live in their entire lives in small cages with no toys, no comfort, and no companionship. The cages are almost never clean, so they live their entire lives in their own filth. In the winter, these dogs breathe with no extra warmth they can cuddle up to. In the summer, they overheat and sweat all day and night. And above all, they live a cruel life with little hope of ever becoming part of a family. This is how breeding dogs from puppy mills live their entire life. If you are wondering what a puppy mill is, it's a large-scale commercial dog breeding operation where the money takes priority over the lives of the dogs that are involved. People have puppy mills because it's an easy way to make money with low maintenance. They've been around for decades and have survived over the years from consumers falling in love with adorable puppies in the windows of pet shops. Why do you think people have puppy mills? Puppy Mills is a big money maker. Um, they keep these guys in a, in a small environment um, and just breed them and breed them and breed them. They do virtually nothing. That's why people do it, because the fine is minimal compared to the, the money, amount of money they make. Once a puppy is born in a puppy mill, they usually have medical or behavior problems. Common diseases found in puppy mills are deafness, epilepsy, cataract, eye lessons, returnit degeneration, glaucoma, hip dysplasia, retardation, personality disorders such as excessive aggression, dislocated kneecaps, periodontal disease, and mammary tumors. How are the dogs being told that they have medical issues? The internet. A lot of things are done on the internet. When you go on the internet and you look at her website, it looks beautiful and you, you see these animals running around and isn't everything nice and that's where I want to get my animal from. But that wasn't the case at all. So what happens is um, the ones that are injured, they're just killed. What was the worst puppy mill case you've ever been on? Probably be the one in Tennessee. Uh, we confiscated 747 animals. 30 of them gave birth as we were pulling them out. We, um, we had uh, 55 people involved in that and we came from obviously the state of Florida. Uh, and we had other people come from Washington and Maryland area. The um, uh, forensic veterinarian that had worked on the Michael Vick case was there. We almost found guilty and received a $50,000 fine. So that's why people do it. Because the fine is minimal compared to the the money, amount of money they make. If or when a puppy mill dog gets to a family, they are sometimes too aggressive to handle with costly medical issues. If the family can't keep the dog anymore, the owner will sometimes leave the dogs to die somewhere, or will leave it on the streets alone without a home. When on the streets, it turns into a stray, and it will either be captured and sent to the pound to be adopted, or be put down at the pound. A smart way to get rid of a dog, if you don't want them anymore, is to put up flyers or advertise selling them to find a good home. If there are no bars, you can always call a local rescue for that breed. Do most of your rescues come from puppy mills or families that have abandoned the dogs? There's, a, there's all different situations for that, especially now in this economy. People move out of their homes, they leave their animals behind. Um, one of the situations right now is uh, if you go for a ride, it, this happens all the time in the Ocala National Forest, if you go for a, a horseback ride, go on horseback riding, you come back and your trail is full of horses because people just can't afford them, so, you know. When the breeding dogs from Puppy Mill can't be bred anymore, they often get killed or sold cheaply to another mill so they can try to get one more litter out of the dog. Dogs from breeders cost more because it costs more to breed a dog right and take care of them and their health. Dogs from puppy mills cost less because the breeders does not take care of them as they should be taken care of. They don't take care of the dog to the proper conditions and other stuff like proper food, baths, shots, beds, and clean living environments. People buy dogs from puppy mills because they are cheaper and it's more convenient to buy at a store. How are puppy mills different from a good breeder? Good breeder follows um, bloodlines. They don't overbreed their animals. They don't have an overabundance of animals. Um, they're kept in an environment where they have room to run and play. A puppy mill have three or four dogs in a, in a rabbit hutch. 
and they just breed them and breed them and breed them. We had some basset hounds that we put, that we took out of the, their environment and we put them on grass and they kept pulling their feet up because they had never touched grass in their life. A breeder, a good breeder does not do that at all. Where are the puppy mills usually located? They're everywhere. They're here. They're in every state. They're everywhere. We couldn't possibly shut them all down. They're, they're in more places than you even know. buying a dog, do it right. First, try to find a purebred rescue group for that breed. If you can't find one locally, try to find a breeder. Tell if the breeder is good. They usually won't sell their puppies to someone they have just met. They need to find out if you're going to be a good owner capable of taking care of a dog. Before you buy a puppy, find out if it has had all of its shots or if it has any medical conditions. One way to be absolutely sure that this breeder is a good one, download and print out how to identify a good dog breeder from www.humanesociety.org. Find a good dog breeder. If you do not care about the breed of dog, save a dog's life and adopt a dog from a local pound or shelter, and give a dog a home that has had a hard life. Dog pounds are also known as shelters. Dog pounds are a place where stray dogs from the streets or dogs that have been abandoned will be caught and put into temporary caged rooms where they will be set up for adoption. In pounds, they have everything they need, but they still don't have a family to love them. If you want to adopt a dog, a good place to start looking is a local dog pound. At dog pounds, there are many applications to fill out before you can adopt a dog. Some are optional and will help you find what you're looking for in a dog. Before you adopt the dog, staff should tell you about any conditions caused by previous owners and if they need medication. They should also tell you the fees on the dog or the long-term expense. The Humane Society is made up of volunteers. These people deserve a break, but you can never take a break from these dogs. The Humane Society is having a food drive for the hungry dogs that are at their organization so they can nourish the dogs back to health. If you want to play a part in helping these dogs, contact the Humane Society of Tampa Bay at 813-876-7138. You can also visit the Humane Society located here in Tampa at 3607 North Armenian Avenue, Tampa, Florida 33607. You can help by giving money, donating, or even volunteering if you love spending time with dogs. stands for our Disaster Animal Response Team. And what we do is we go into situations like hurricanes, could go into wildfires. Uh, our job is to um, get these animals out of harm's way into a safe situation and hopefully back with their owners. We also do puppy mill raids, dark fighting, uh, confiscations, so. How can you volunteer at DART? Online and there's a volunteer form that you can fill out and then you have to take a course which it starts and runs kind of late at night and then starts early in the morning and runs late at night and the whole idea is for it to simulate a disaster situation it really does it's a it's a great organization and there's a there's a lot of good things that come out of it